वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो लेट अस स्टडी द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द प्रोटीन्स प्रोटीन्स आर द मैक्रो मॉलिक्यूल्स डेट हैव मोलर मैस यूजुअली ग्रेटर देन द 10,000 ग्राम्स पर मोल इवन दो प्रोटीन्स आर मैक्रो मॉलिक्यूल्स स्टिल यू कैन नॉट सी अ प्रोटीन मॉलिक्यूल विद द नेकेड आई और इवन विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ माइक्रोस्कोप सो वी हैव टू यूज सम स्पेशल टेक्निक्स सम स्पेशल मैथड्स टू इवेलुएट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द प्रोटीन्स and one of the commonly used method to study the structure of the proteins is the x ray crystallography my dear students crystals of the pure protein are prepared and then x rays are thrown on that crystals and the deflection pattern of the x rays that shows the structure of the proteins and x ray crystallography has provided us information that the structure of the protein can be studied at four different levels with each level more complex as compared to the previous one so there are four levels of the organization of the structure of the proteins and these four levels are the primary structure secondary structure then tertiary structure and quaternary structure the primary structure is the simplest level of the structure of the proteins while the tertiary and quaternary levels they are the most complex levels of the structural organization of the proteins now let us study them one by one what is primary structure primary structure basically means the study of sequence of amino acid in a protein my dear students all proteins are made up of the 20 common amino acids but the number of amino acid and the sequence of amino acid varies from protein to protein and the sequence of amino acid that is very important because even if the sequence of a single amino acid in a protein is disturbed that results in the loss of the structure and function of that particular protein just for instance in case of the sickle cell anemia only one amino acid that is glutamic acid is replaced by valine valine at one of the beta chain of the hemoglobin which results in the loss of the structure and function of the hemoglobin and also the shape of the red blood cells is changed they become sickle like and then the person suffers from the deficiency of the normal red blood cells in the body that is the sickle cell anemia so sickle cell anemia is just because of the disturbance of a, the sequence of a single amino acid out of more than 500 amino acid of the hemoglobin molecule so study of the number of amino acid and sequence of amino acid in a protein is called as its primary structure primary structure is maintained by the peptide bonds you know that when amino acid molecules they join together then an amide linkage is formed between the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amino group of the other amino acid that is called as the peptide linkage it is a covalent bond so basically the primary structure is maintained by the covalent bonds which are the peptide bonds or amide bonds and when there is a long chain of the amino acid then dear students at one end of the chain carboxyl group of one of the amino acid is free that is called as carboxyl terminus of the chain or c terminus of that chain and at the other end the amino group of the amino acid is free that is called as the amino terminus or n terminus of the protein if you want to disrupt the primary structure of the protein then you will have to break the peptide bonds present between the amino acid molecules no what is secondary structure secondary structure results when two dimensional coiling of the polypeptide chain takes place so polypeptide chains they coil in a two dimensional way or they form sheets and that structure is called as their secondary structures and the very important point is that secondary structure is maintained by the hydrogen bonds hydrogen bonds are present between the oxygen of the carbonyl group and hydrogen of the amine group this point is very important for the mcqs type questions that the hydrogen bond is present between which two groups of the amino acid so keep in mind that oxygen of the carbonyl group and hydrogen of the amine group so examples of the secondary structure are alpha helix and beta plated sheets these are just two schematic diagrams that show how the alpha helix and beta plated sheets are uh, they are present or how they look and my dear students if you want to disrupt the secondary structure of the proteins then you will have to break the hydrogen bonds which are present between the amino acid molecules 
Now let's talk about the third level that is the tertiary structure. In tertiary structure, three-dimensional twisting and folding pattern of a protein is observed. So that twisting and folding back of the polypeptide backbone of the protein that results in the formation of the tertiary structure. And the tertiary structure is maintained by the non-covalent interactions like electrostatic interaction which are basically the ionic bond present between the NH3 positive part and COO negative part of the Zwitterines. And hydrophobic interactions, these are the again non-covalent forces of attraction which are present between the non-polar R group or alkyl group of the amino acids. You know that there are 20 amino acids that differ from each other with respect to the R group and when this R group is non-polar then this non-polar R group of the different amino acids they interact with one another and such kind of interaction is called as the hydrophobic interaction. So secondary structure is maintained by hydrogen bonds and tertiary structure is maintained by these electrostatic and hydrophobic interactions. Dear student a very important point is that primary structure is maintained by the covalent bond which are the peptide bond while the secondary and tertiary both structure are maintained by the non-covalent type of bonds or non-covalent non type of attractions. Now my dear students the last one is the quaternary structure. Quaternary structure is basically the special arrangement of two or more than two polypeptide chains of a protein. Quaternary structure is seen when the protein consists of two or more than two polypeptide chains and their special arrangement with respect to each other that is called as the quaternary structure of the proteins. Dear students, if there are two polypeptide chains then that quaternary structure is a dimer and if these two polypeptide chains are different from each other then that is a heterodimer just like in case of the insulin you know that there are two chains alpha chain and beta chain and they are different from each other so basically quaternary structure of the insulin will be an example of the heterodimer and in case of hemoglobin there are four chains two alpha chains two beta chains so the quaternary structure of the hemoglobin is an example of the hetero tetramer so this one is a slight discussion about the four levels of the structure of the proteins. Dear students, if you want to understand the these four levels of the structure of the protein, then a wire can help us to understand these four levels. How this wire can help us? Let us look into this. So here is the wire which can help us to study the four levels of the structure of the protein. This flat structure, that is the primary structure maintained by the peptide bonds and that only uh, is related to the sequence and number of amino acid in a protein. Now my dear students, this flat structure is basically the primary structure. Now if the backbone of the polypeptide chain that undergoes two dimensional coiling, then this alpha helix is formed. This is an example of the alpha helix and that is basically the secondary structure of the protein which is maintained by the hydrogen bonds present between the Carbo carboxyl group and the amino group of the amino acid. Now, if this alpha helix or secondary structure that undergoes three dimensional twisting and coiling or folding, then that is called as the tertiary structure of the protein. So, this one is the example of the tertiary structure of the protein. And if there are more than one polypeptide chains and they are specially arranged with respect to each other then that structure is called as the quaternary structure. So here is the combination of the two polypeptide chains that have special arrangement with respect to each other and that is an example of the quaternary structure of the protein. So in this way this wire can help us to understand the concept of the structure of the protein in a simpler way. It was all about the structure of the proteins. Take care a lot.